So what is the setup that you require? So obviously you require a RF generator. You need Siam in the theater and then you need a team including an anesthetist. Now this is how I position the patient. I keep small uh, support uh, or folded sheet in the interscapular area so that I just mild extension. Now here you see there is mild extension here and the patient is in neutral position straight. We have the C-arm here, a lateral C-arm, I prefer that. And then what I try to do is I try to make the anterior cranial base as flat as possible. Okay. The cella should be sharp and clear as you can see here. And then the clivus, the petrous temporal bone. And as I was mentioning, I also want to see the heart palate because the posterior one third I feel gives you the right access to the foramen ovale. Now look here, Th these are two views I have shown. This is how I want it rather and not like this. Okay, so I, I would prefer my x-ray to be shown like this and my needle going in here. Now where do I start my needle entry? The needle entry is just a line drawn below the lateral canthus and angle of mouth. So there is a line drawn here. This is the point and it is almost 2.5 centimeters to 3 centimeters lateral from the commissura labialis and it is again in line with the lateral canthus. So that point is the entry point. Uh, after I have marked my entry point, I have seen on the lateral x-ray how my cella is looking, how the clivus is looking, can I see the heart palate or not. Once I have done that, I infiltrate. After infiltration, I insert the needle. Now this needle, I either use a 10 or 15 centimeter needle depending on the RF electrode that I have. Now this needle is an insulated needle uh, as you will appreciate. It's all insulated except for the last 5 millimeter which is the active tip which would get heated. Now once uh, I have chosen the needle, I insert one finger inside the cheek in, in the buccal mucosa. I touch it there and what I do is I feel the mandible and the upper molar part and my knee, my finger is there so that when I am inserting the needle from outside it does not penetrate and I am guiding the needle into the right trajectory. So guidance of the needle depends on fluoroscopy and on your judgment on how you feel and the outer markings on the face like needs to go toward the medial canthus or mid pupillary line and you know it has to be medial to the mandible so on and so forth. So here uh, I am just showing you the needle trajectory on a C arm and this is the trajectory basically. So here I can feel I am guiding it through this and my hand is guiding the needle and I am gradually pushing it in. Now here again you will see that it is posterior one third of the heart palate and about a centimeter below the floor of the clivus. Now in case if you are and there would be certain circumstances where you are not able to enter into the foramen ovale. At that point of time make your Siam AP rather not AP but a oblique submental view. And this oblique submental view would give you, will show you the foramen ovale and you can sort of uh, guide your needle. Especially what I feel is that to judge whether you need to push the needle superior or inferior, you need a lateral x-ray. So if it is going towards the cella, you get it down on a lateral x-ray. If you are going towards petrus, and then you again on lateral x-ray move it about a centimeter below the cella. But 
as far as medial and lateral is concerned, then you need a submental view. So if you're getting a submental view, you know where the foramen obel is and you can uh, insert the needle accordingly. Now here, I have pushed my needle on looking into the submental view and I have inserted. Once my needle is into the foramen obel, I give a test stimulation. Now this is very important. Now for test stimulation, a two hertz stimulation is given and you see the muscle contraction. What I have also observed is as you are increasing the voltage, the patient starts moving and he would tell that, you know, I have some pain. And once you have given the test stimulation, there would be paresthesia in the division of the stimulation. Now, once your test stimulation has been confirmed, here I'm just trying to demonstrate the test uh, stimulation. Now, here we are preparing and when I give, there is some movement of the jaw. So this is what we wanted to demonstrate. Here I am showing you the procedure again. We are inserting the needle. And as we are inserting the needle, we see on the x-ray. And see, now look here, the needle has really gone. Inside there is CSF which is flowing out. There is CSF which is coming out. And that also shows that, you know, I have gone into the foramen oval and I am near the caesarean ganglia. Once that is done, I would confirm it with a test stimulation. And once the test stimulation is uh, done and I confirm that I am at the correct place, we give the uh, ablation. Now, what as far as ablation is concerned, we give continuous lesioning. As you will see here, there are pulsed lesioning as well, but generally it has not been found to be very effective. So we prefer continuous lesioning. And this RF generator, you can see through this, uh, I can do test stimulation and then I can give continuous lesioning. Here, what I have shown is that this is the setting which I have set. So 70 degrees centigrade for 60 seconds. And this is what I am able to achieve. This is 70 degrees centigrade at an impedance of 325 ohms. Uh, this is the elapsed time. Okay, so these are certain figures that you will get on your RF generator as well. Prep Clinic. Dream Beyond.